I think I think there is a danger with all those biases to try and break down trading into too many biases. Um, I I often go into coaching situations where people have said to me, I've read one of Daniel Kahneman's books or I've read this particular book and I'm loss averse and I'm prone to anchoring and I'm, I, I have confirmation biases, can you get rid of them all for me? And I say, well actually, no, we're not going to work on getting rid of them. These biases are part of our human nature. They're not actually faults in how we are. They're, they're very much something that belongs to us. They're part, they're part of our character. Um, we've evolved to have those biases for a reason. And necessarily fighting them is not easy. So let's try and work on your strengths and what we can do to actually, let, let's look at the upside, look at what you do well. And perhaps we can bring in some processes which check some of those biases. But we're not going to work on each bias individually. We're going to work on developing a method which can, which can as we say, um, leverage your strengths and enable you to monetize um, your analysis or your, your knowledge of the market. Um, and let's build into that process some checks which can offset your weaknesses. Now, all these various biases will often be part of that weakness. But often these biases are also part of our process for analysing um, and to just cut them out cuts you off from um, some very powerful insights as well. And what about anxiety and stress and fear? Do they negatively impact trading or can you use them to your advantage? You can use them to your advantage. As I mentioned before, we've got one trader who is highly risk averse at a hedge fund and he made over $100 million last year in the FX market. And he really is, he has a lot of anxiety, he has a lot of stress, but he's actually managed to turn it. He's, he's manufactured um, some processes that he's laid onto his trading, which offset these. And he, he kind of uses them, they're information for him. You know, within that, he's, he suddenly feels a, bit, a, a big build up of anxiety as the market's doing something, it's time to get out of the market. He'll use that. I don't want to be in this market. So if his level rises too much. So, so actually people that listen to what the body's telling them and what their fear is telling them are very powerful. It's a very powerful um, information tool. It's almost like we're a barometer ourselves of what we're feeling and what's happening in the market and how we should be reacting to it. Um, I tell people not to turn off their emotions if they try to, to actually listen to their emotions because there's information in there, very good information. Uh, do you think we're rational or ish irrational decision makers and can you narrate some instances where they've traded this very rational behaviours in the financial market? Okay, but think about your own trading, whether you've, your own investments. Every investment has a good reason. Every action has a good reason. At that moment in time, it has a good reason. If we panic out of something, it seems irrational, but at that point in time, we're trying to preserve ourselves. In, in light of the bigger picture, it seems irrational. So what's irrational and rational? It's, not all, it's always obvious in a different context. Um, I can look back to my trading and I'd just be going, why the hell did I do that? But at that point in time, it was actually a very rational thing to do. The problem is that we, 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 we move in and out of different mindsets. Um, the calm me, the logical me, the planning me is one thing. When I'm stressed and markets are fast and I'm losing money, it's almost like I'm a different person. My decisions in the context of that will be different. So. I, I'm, I'm challenged by this question of rationality and irrationality with traders and with people. Um, the more planning you can do, the more things make sense afterwards, the more you can stick to those plans, the more you can bring the discipline in. The closer to our, you are to your true personality in your trading, the more you're likely to be, um, to be rational in everything you do. So. You can have two traders trading the same product, sitting opposite each other, um, one's long and one's short. 
they both got rational reasons for those trades in their own minds. So it's, it's a difficult question. Behavioural finance is interesting because it says a lot of these actions we do are irrational. Actually, there's nothing more rational than trying to preserve yourself. <laughs>